that's 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 the one. Go to the title screen. Yep, it should be uh, up and going right now. Do you see me scrolling through the uh, through the options of the chapters? Yeah. All right, so basically I'm live, and there might be like a few second delay, but you're, but you're essentially what you're seeing is me playing the game, and you probably hear my audio too because. I have my headset connected to the controller, so you're probably hearing me talk through the uh, through the mic. Yeah, so there's going to be a little bit of a delay, but. Pretty much what you're seeing is going to be live, you know, footage. Plus, I can go to my phone and go to my account personally, and I should see somebody, one viewer, which is pretty much you. And if you, and if you type something in the chat, then I'll be able to see it, and I can respond accordingly. That's pretty much how streaming works. Yeah, so pretty cool, awesome. You get, basically you get the whole like thing on, you know, on your phone. But I'm seeing you're seeing live footage pretty much just from. Even though we're in different time zones, and there's a slight, you know, maybe five or ten second delay, but you're seeing live footage. So I'm going to click the first one right here, the first episode. It says, it's about time. I'm going to turn on the volume. Yeah, so we'll do new game. Would you like to see navigation from Mario has a new goal? Sure. All right, I'm ready. Good evening. I'm Dr. Emmett Brown. I'm standing on the parking lot at Twin Pines Mall. It's Saturday morning, October 26th, 1985, 118 a.m. And this is temporal experiment number one. Come on, Einie. Hey, boy, get in there. That a boy. In you go. Get down. Get your seatbelt on. That's it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Please note that Einstein's clock is in precise synchronization with my control watch. Got it? Right. Check, Doc. Good. Have a good trip, Einstein. Watch your head. You got that thing hooked up to the... car? Watch this. Yeah, okay. Got it. Not me. The car. The car. Yeah. So what? What? What you're seeing right now is just the beginning of the game. Just kind of like your opening, opening credits in a way. If my calculations are correct, when this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. It's showing that pretty much the first movie right now, but I can probably already tell you right now this is just a, nothing but a dream watch sequence this, that Marty is having. Occurred at exactly 1.20 a.m. and zero seconds! Hot Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ, Doc! You disintegrated Einstein! Calm down, Marty! I didn't disintegrate anything! The molecular structure of both Einstein and the car are completely intact! Where the hell are they? 
they? The appropriate question is, when the hell are they? You see, Einstein has just become the world's first time traveler. I sent him into the future. One minute into the future, to be exact. And at precisely 1.21 a.m. in zero seconds, we shall catch up with him and the time machine. So basically what... So what you're seeing right now is, it, it's just, the intro is just giving you an idea how the game's gonna work. It, I basically, I'll get to choose different dialogue options, and then it just progresses the story forward. And then you'll see, as the game goes on, that I'll be moving Marty along, so. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Doc. Are you telling me that you built a time machine out of a DeLorean? The way I see it, if you're gonna build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? It seems it's coming in pretty well. Stainless though, steel isn't it? construction Crystal made clear. the first espresso. Look out! Uh, Doc? Huh, oh, that's peculiar. Uh, where's the car, Doc? It should have caught up with us. 27 seconds ago. Doc, uh, w what happened to Einstein? No need for concern. It's probably just a minor miscalibration of the time circuit. Marty, could you get my notebook? It should be in the toolbox. So now I'm moving Marty. Notebook. Notebook. Got it. Flux capacitor? Job, That's it! What the heck's a flux capacitor? My latest invention. The thing that makes time travel possible. In this notebook, I've detailed the nearly three decades of scientific breakthroughs necessary to build a working time machine. If it ever fell into the wrong hands, the consequences could be catastrophic. Let's see. It's mass equals I times Z and E equals the square root of Z times C. Doc, something's way off here. Uh, Doc? Great <laughs> Scott! Doc, what is it? I've made a horrible mistake! I'm sorry, Marty. Doc, come back! Doc! Doc! Marty? Is everything okay? See, it was just all a bad yeah, dream. Yeah, Mom, I... Gonna see it was, just, it was a just a nightmare. Uh, I was in the past, and... Doc was there. Well, you're safe and sound now. Back in good old 1986. But you'd better get up. Your father's waiting for you. Huh? Were so this you takes place a year later in 1986. Holy crap, I'm late. Tonight. So here we are back in Doc's lab. And what you'll see here and what you'll see here in just a bit is that it looks like nobody's home. And all his stuff's there. The question is, where is the doc?
see the Bob Gale, which you'll see the names. It's Dad, the actual people that are we were too involved late to in the movie. The were sale? The creation of this Better game. late than never. You wouldn't believe how much rare stuff there is back here. That's the... dark stuff. The city has no right now, to. Now, son, I know you're upset, but your friend's been gone for months, and the city really seems hell-bent on using his land for that new parking garage. And, hey, is that a first edition Jules Verne? It's just not fair. But at least things can't get any worse. Hey, Marty. Hi, Biff. <laughs> yes. Come to see if the old crackpot well, had any Apparently, since treasure. Doc's been missing, they're, they're repossessing everything yeah, at, his, I guess at I'm his just... lab. And selling off his stuff. We're remembering. Hey, let me! Now, Biff, leave Marty alone. This is a very emotional time for him. Oh, sure. D sorry, Marty. Hey! Biff? Uh, sorry. Okay, so I already messed with the dog feeder. I need to go... Television? Does nature contrive it so that even with a time machine, you can intervene to prevent your own conception, for example? Let's see, what else is there? You know what? Let's go over here. Yes, I'm searching through Doc's stuff. I just gotta go around. Hope that wasn't poison gas or anything. Doc's stuff is being auctioned off. You better search the lab to make sure something dangerous doesn't fall into the wrong hands, like, say, Biff's, of course. Hey, let me try, Marty! Now, Biff. Let Marty have his turn. Uh, you got it, Mr. McFly! Doc built this model there of downtown go. Hill Valley way back in 1955. The clock tower in the courthouse even works. What the? Is that Doc's notebook in there? Hey, that looks just like the courthouse. You gotta hand it to the old coot. He was good with his hands. Uh, Biff, uh, can, can I see that a minute? This would look great in my fish tank. Give the old carp something new to nibble on. You know, you and my folks go way back. Yeah? So? So how about letting me have that model courthouse uh, for old time's sake? Eh, I think I'll keep it. Give it here, Biff. Well, well, look at what we have here. Looks like plans for something. What's a flux catheter? It's none of your business. Doc asked me to- Brown's worm food, kid. But this looks like it might be worth something. <laughs> uh, now I gotta get this thing back from Biff. Hey, Biff. I just can't let you keep that notebook. It's dangerous. What, is it set to explode or something? Well, uh, in a way. I'll take my chances. I only want that notebook because, well, I'm, I'm sentimental. It's like a piece of Doc. Doc's dead. Time to get over it and move on. Hmm. I'll pay you for it. How much? Uh... Not enough. Ah, uh, never mind. He's dead. Who's running this sale anyway? Oh, that'd be me, son. You? Why? 
Well, once it became apparent that the bank was going through with the sale, I volunteered to oversee it in order to make sure that Doc's stuff would be treated with a modicum of respect. Isn't that right, Biff? You got it, Mr. McFly! I'm telling you, this sale is a joke. Doc's only been gone for a few months, and I happen to know- Yes, you've told us he's not dead. He's on a trip. Let's say you're right. Have you considered that this trip may not have been entirely voluntary? I hate to say it, but Doc's run up some pretty sizable debts around town. Maybe he's just hiding from his creditors. That notebook is Doc's legacy. I've got an obligation to protect it. Now, hold on a minute. Didn't you just get done telling me Doc's still around? Off traveling somewhere? Yeah. Then how is it your obligation to protect his legacy? You can't have it both ways, Marty. If Doc's alive, he can protect his own legacy. You got Doc wrong. Sure, maybe he's not so good with money. That's just because his mind's always on bigger things. But he's still a straight-up guy. He'd never run away from his problems. Well, you know him better than I do, son. But the bank is within its rights to sell off his stuff. Maybe you should try to find some things Poor to Doc. remember him by before <laughs> not a, Biff cracks Not around, him up. and they're selling off his stuff. Do you think dreams can predict the future? Well, you know I don't go in for that mystical stuff, but I do think they can reflect how you're feeling about the future. I'll keep looking around. Thanks, Dad. It took me forever to repair this thing after I blew it out last time, and now some jerk's gonna pick it up for pennies. Yeah, basically, I... Yeah, I get I pick the choices and let's make some noise. dialogue options. Hey dad, why's my guitar got a price tag on it? Sorry, son. Must have been an overzealous clerk. Just pick it up, I'll iron things out with the bank. You picked up my press X button to open your inventory. And... Now select the amplifier to plug in. Here's an oldie, but a goodie. One, two, three. <laughs> hey, look! It's Chuck Butthead. Let me show you how it's done. No, now, Biff, Biff, don't. You're gonna... I think that's Marty's guitar. <laughs> oh, uh, gosh. Uh, you're right, Mr. McFly. Oh, He's here you go, go Marty. Little ride. Let's hear a few licks. Wait, I gotta get him to... Man, you kids have ruined rock and roll. I need him to get him and back. And now, something your kids are really gonna like. Thanks for warming him up for me, butthead. There we Biff, go. Let's go, I Biff. thought I told you not to take my son's guitar. Oh, right. Uh, sure thing, Mr. McFly. Uh, I was just warming him up for you, Marty. Let's see what you got. Okay, I gotta somehow get him to play that. Man, you kids have ruined rock and roll. I All better right. not crank it up anymore. I really don't want to blow this thing out again. Yeah, let's see. It'll take a pretty powerful force to knock that notebook out of Viv's grasp. Yeah, I know. Uh, now that is a dangerous amp. Okay, so... You want to hear a number by Biff and the Biff Tones? Always happy to play for my adoring fans. Now, Biff. Oh, yeah. 
Here you go, Marty. Oh, I think I know what I need to do. I need to talk to the dad again. All right. Man, you kids have ruined rock and roll. Okay, so I need to I need to talk to the dad to convince hey, dad. him to do this. About Biff, Dad, I, I know you're trying to help. He talks a big game, son, but he's so I think not I had to so choose tough. This dialogue option I've been dealing with him a long fight, time. So do it. Believe me, I can handle him. So can I. I guess you can. Okay, son. I'll stay out of your way. All right, I think you I got it. To find you're gonna me. see. What's gonna happen is you're gonna see Biff fly. Problem? Biff? He's got this thing. See, and I really need to get it back. If he stole something from you, no, it, it's one of Doc's notebooks. Yeah, he found it first, but. Oh, well then, I'm not sure what to tell you. I guess you'll just have to appeal to his better angels or something. Or something. I'll keep looking around. Okay. Thanks, think... Dad. Alright, it's gonna work this time. You wanna hear a number by Biff and the Biff Tones? Always happy to play for my adoring fans. There we go. Now watch what me to Marty blow the, the lid off film? this joint. This Whatever you say. Wow! Rock on, Biff. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, Doc, where are you? Look what just came back. Doc? Einstein! It's Einstein! Where did you come from, boy? Didn't you bring Doc with you? Play this tape recorder, Marty, which you're going to see in just a bit. Marty, if you're hearing this recording, then the DeLorean's automatic retrieval feature is a resounding success. Automatic retrieval? In case of my failure to return to the DeLorean within an allotted time, I program the time machine to jump to these four dimensional coordinates without me. As you are well aware, time travel is an inherently risky activity, and despite my elaborate precautions, there's always the possibility that I could land in trouble sometime. And that sometime is now. Or then. Or, uh, maybe later. He's in trouble. Marty, you come to my rescue in the past. Or oh, was it the future? Anyway, I'm relying on you to do it again. Please, take the DeLorean back. Or, or forward. To whatever it is, I'm stuck in time. When you get there, I'm sure you'll figure out what to do. That's it? Aren't you gonna tell me when that is? Just go to the date specified on the time circuit readout under the heading mark, Last Time Departed. Good luck. Right, right, last time departed, last time departed, uh... Oh, jeez. Come on, come on! Come on! Crap! Oh, great! How am I supposed to find him now? I think that shoe's gonna be the answer. Okay, Doc, I know I haven't seen you in a few months, but I'm pretty sure this isn't your shoe. When in doubt, use Einstein. 
What do you know about this, Shuiny? Great Scott! I think he's onto something! Okay, now we're getting somewhere. How's this supposed to lead me to dock, Einie? Strickland. Step away from the door! Ah. Now, let me get a look at you. Einstein, come on! Just as I suspected. Hooligans! Get along now! Scat! E. Strickland? You aren't related to, uh, Vice Principal Strickland, are you, ma'am? Not that it's any of your business, but I'm his sister, Edna. Oh, and you're one of those McFly slackers, aren't you? Yes, uh, what's old man Strick? I mean, what else has your brother been saying about me? Nothing I couldn't have deduced for myself, slacker. Can you let me in? I've got something to show you. What is it? Let me see. A shoe? Wow, now what would I want with a... Huh? <gasps> so this shoe's gonna give me into her apartment and this is where I'm gonna find the clues to find out where Doc is and take the time machine backward or forward to where he's stuck. So essentially it's another rescue mission. Leave that creature outside! Sorry Einstein. Took you long enough. Um, there's a lot of stairs. To return the shoe, I mean. I lost it ages ago. You can put it down next to the other one. Hmm, much better. So neat and orderly. Nah, I suppose you'll be wanting some sort of reward now. No, I... All I've got is tea and candy. But... I'm sorry I called you a hooligan. I try not to jump to conclusions, but after all, nine out of ten people in this city are hooligans. It's a fact. Look it up. Uh... Have a seat, Sonny. Newspapers. You kid! Put out those cigarettes! Hopefully that's not us when we're older, yelling out the window against random kids here. That'd just be sad. Now I gotta look at those pi those pictures. Yeah. <laughs> Is that Vice Principal Strickland? Mother never could keep little Gerald out of her clothes. <laughs> Gerald. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Miss Pretty Whiskers is very particular about who handles her food. Man, she keeps it hot in here. the kettle. I'll be right back with some tea. And don't touch anything! Huh, I guess I didn't need to talk to her. Well, let's just go through the, uh, the newspapers. Juveniles collide with manure truck. <laughs> nice picture.
Brown Mansion destroyed. 1962. No, no, that's not where Doc's stranded. I don't even know where to start looking for clues in these stacks. Wish I could narrow it down to a year at least. Firm announces plans for Lone Pine Mall. Peabody Ranch to be rezoned for commercial development. I don't even know where to start looking for clues in these stacks. Wish I could narrow it down to a year at least. Okay, so I gotta figure out how to narrow it down to the year. What is the hint saying here? Maybe Mr. Trickle has some information like help with your quest. Hey, uh, mind if I use your binoculars for a sec? Go ahead, dear. Okay, she came back. Good. I Man, guess I gotta talk to her and I then look at the I see Biff going into the video store. Yeah, you wouldn't believe the filth that boy watches. Yeah, he's nothing but an out-of-control hedonist, just like his father. If there's a clue to find a doc out there, I'm not seeing it. I don't even know where to start looking. Uh, Miss Strickland? Jack! Diane! I know what you're doing oh, behind I that I tree! Do. I need to talk to her? Yes? Turn the radiator, then go to the newspaper. I, I already figured out what I need to do. Do you remember when you lost your shoe? Shoe? That shoe over there. Oh, that shoe! I already figured <laughs> it out. Hi, what a nosy Nelly! No one likes a busybody, you know. But... Oh, fine, let me think about it. Uh... Yes, I, I remember. I, I lost it in a scuffle with a, a dog. Oh, when was it? Oh, yes. The day that speakeasy burned down. <laughs> a speakeasy? In Hill Valley? Don't act so surprised, young man. Your generation doesn't hold a copyright on moral depravity, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Sin has been on the prowl in Hill Valley since the day it was founded. Wow, a speakeasy. That must have been wild. Is it true they used to drink gin out of slippers so like my grandma said? Don't romanticize the past, young man. Prohibition was a time when gangsters ruled the town while honest citizens quaked in their beds. So where was it? That speakeasy that burned down, I mean. That was ages ago. If you're looking for bootleg hooch. No, I I'm just curious, that's all. I'm a, a student of history. Student of history? My Aunt Fanny! Yeah, your generation of hooligans and slackers could give two ripe figs about history. Miss Strickland? Oh, video store! Huh? The speakeasy used to be hidden in plain sight down there in the town square. Right where that disgusting videotape rental store squats today. So the video store building must have gone up after the speakeasy burned down. The following year, as I recall. Where was So the video store building must have gone up after the speakeasy burned down. Following year, as I recall. Okay, so What's with all I these newspapers? newspapers? This is my personal archive. I've got every issue of the Hill Valley Telegraph ever published. Get out. Every single issue? From 1871 to the present. If it happened in Hill Valley, you'll find it in my stacks. I guess somewhere in these stacks, there must be an article about the speakeasy burning down. Naturally. Yeah, I probably wrote it myself. <laughs> I was quite a reporter back in the day. Any idea what date that article came out? Well, obviously the day after the speakeasy burned down. Don't let me keep oh. you from your business. Tossing that Kleenex on the ground! Get the newspaper and 
then we'll get back to the time machine. So. There's the radiator. There's the whistle! Surely the water's boiling by now! Oh, I see, but it fools her into checking we'll get the key. Now I go in here. Newspaper. Clint Eastwood plunges to death on runaway train. All right, Einstein brought me this shoe, and Miss Strickland lost the shoe on the day the speakeasy burned down. But when did the speakeasy burn down? I at least need to know the year. Let me check the newspaper. October 28th, 1985. Authorities still mystified by Maul's shootout. I don't even know where to start looking for clues in these stacks. Wish I could narrow it down to a year at least. Okay, I still gotta find the year. What does it say? And the last issue during the age of the year, so. What's the other name? If you're looking for a date, you'll find it on. Oh, on a building. Got it. You gotta use the binoculars to find the year to narrow it down. Oh. Hey, uh, mind if I use your binoculars for a sec? Go ahead, dear. That makes sense. Okay. It took a little bit longer, so there you go. 1932. That's the year I gotta go back to. Rebuilt in February, 1932. So the fire must have happened before then. But when? I need a date! Go Don't look at me! I'm far too old for you. Alrighty, one more time. She's gotta leave the room. There's the whistle! Surely the water's boiling by now! Final time. Hey, uh, mind if I use oh, your binoculars for no. a sec? Go ahead, dear. <sighs> Took the wrong button. Rebuilt in February 1932. So the fire must have happened before then. But when? I need a date! I'm tired of dealing with this, this old lady. We gotta, we gotta get her. There's the whistle! Surely the water's boiling by now! Yeah, let's get out of here so I can check the date. Let's there. see. Ground broken on site of former speakeasy, singer that vanishes, Hill Valley Expo it. delights crowd, soup kitchen exposed. Here we go. Speakeasy arsonist slain. Legal procedure gave way to old fashioned vengeance last night when a mob descended on the Hill Valley Police Station. The suspect in the speakeasy arson case, a drifter known as Carl Sagan, was pulled from his. Carl Sagan? It's Doc! Killed by a mob. <laughs> What's the date? June 14th, 1931. Jeez, I gotta rescue him. My newspapers! Sorry, Miss Strickland. Uh, let no! me... No! You've gotten my history out of order! Oh, do you know how long it'll take to fix what you've done? Oh, get out! Get out! Get out! Oh, Help! Cool. Police! Bad. I'm being attacked by hooligans! I gotta get the game. Gotta go back to the past. Marty! Where you been, son? And what are you doing in that getup? Uh, didn't I tell you? I, I got the lead in the school play. Uh, we're doing... Grapes of Wrath? Right. Oh, Steinbeck. Who are you playing? Um, uh... Never mind, you don't have to explain. I'm sure whatever it is you're up to, you know what you're doing, right? I hope so. Hey, sometimes you gotta go out on a limb for the ones you love, right? Wish my dad had understood that. You won't stay away too long. You'll barely know I was gone. You ready to go, Einstein? Alright, 
Time circuits? On. Flux capacitor? Uh, fluxy. Okay. If Doc's gonna get killed on June 14th, 1931, I'll just show up the day before and get him out. I hope you know what you're doing, Doc. Einstein, where'd you go now, boy? Young man! Who? Uh, me? You're the only man in the street, and I'm looking for a man in the street reaction. Naturally, you know about the explosion that destroyed this illegal gin establishment. I read about it, yeah. What's your opinion of Carl Sagan, the stranger who single-handedly did what the law has been unable to do for ten long years, namely, rid Hill Valley of the scourge of liquor? Uh... Definitely a supporter. You can mark me down as a supporter, the young man said, flashing a boyish yet virile grin. Hill Valley needs more upstanding youths like yourself. Do you have a message for the vicious gangsters who still roam these streets, no doubt plotting to corrupt our citizens with another den of booze, sin, and debauchery? Ask him where I can get the address. Ah, I see! Because you want to blast it to smithereens just like Carl Sagan did! With public-spirited citizens like you around, the lawless element will be on the run in no time. Mr... may I get your name? Yeah, it's... I am Michael Corleone. Michael Corleone! Thank you for sharing your candid opinions, Mr. Corleone. Edna Strickland, Hill You'll Valley see, Herald. I was given a, three fake names and I chose Michael Corleone. I know. I met you back. I mean, I'm familiar with your work. You read my column? How sweet! I know it's just an etiquette column, but I believe it'll lead to bigger and better... Oh! Einstein, no! Down, boy! 
Is this wretched creature yours? He assaulted me once before. What's got into you? Aggressive dogs must be kept on leash at all times. It's the law. Look it up. Doc, I gotta find Doc. I guess this is where the speakeasy burned down. How'd Doc ever get mixed up in that? for me, Doc. I did? When? May 14th, 1986. 1980? <gasps> the automatic retrieval system. Of course. I'd almost forgotten about that. So what's our plan for getting you out of here? Plan? We don't need a plan. We don't. Not in the slightest. The police picked me up for that speakeasy fire a couple of weeks ago, but the DA hasn't got a case. They're releasing me tomorrow morning. So basically, I traveled 50 years into the past to deliver your car? Sorry about that, but it's so wonderful to see you. We have a lot of catching up to do. Yeah, y you might want to hold off on that, Doc. Right, Scott! I'm going to be gunned down by gangsters on the steps of the courthouse! Why would they do that? Guess they didn't approve of my burning down their speakeasy. Very funny, Doc. Maybe now we should come up with a plan? A plan? Right. But what? Why don't I take the DeLorean, go back in time before you were arrested, and stop you from getting caught in the first place? Don't even think about it. Without my unjust incarceration, the events that sent you into the past might never happen, resulting in a paradox of continuum shattering proportions. Jeez, we've been back together for five minutes, Doc, and you're already talking about the end of the universe. I've missed that. Don't be ridiculous, Marty. I was only referring to the end of the universe as we know it. I suppose I could just get some dynamite and break you out of jail. No, no, that's far too dangerous. Not just to me, but to random innocent people in the past. The repercussions could be... <gasps> that's it! What's it? My rocket-powered drill. You have a rocket-powered drill? Not yet. I haven't built it yet. You've lost me, Doc. Listen, a few months ago, my 17-year-old self sent in a patent application for a rocket-powered drill. I abandoned the project after I never heard back from the patent office, but the prototype should be nearly complete. Great, I'll just run back to your lab and... No, no, I said nearly complete. You need me to help you finish it. How the hell am I supposed to sneak a half-finished rocket-powered drill into your cell? Not me, me! 1931 me! Wait a minute, Doc. You want me to convince your 1931 self to build a rocket-powered drill to break you out of jail? Precisely! How am I supposed to convince your younger self to finish the rocket drill? Just tell him I need to break his older self out of jail? Absolutely not. Whatever you do, you can't tell my younger self anything about time travel. I won't come up with the inspiration for the flux capacitor for another 24 years. Then what am I supposed Just to... Just be your charming self. From what I remember, I'm a pretty easygoing kid, so enlisting me in a scientific adventure should be a piece of cake. Won't talking to yourself cause, you know, irreparable damage to the space-time continuum or something? It should be fine. I've already invented the idea of the rocket drill. You've just got to go my younger self into finishing the prototype. Okay, well, let's say I go along with this crazy idea. Where can I find you? I mean, uh, the other you. How should I know? It was over 50 years ago. Why don't you go over to the soup kitchen next door and give my house a call? They'll know where to find me. Soup kitchen. Got it. Just stay away from the soup. It'll cause irreparable damage to your digestive system. Soup. 
I guess I better get started. Don't worry, Doc. I'll get you out of here in no time. I'm not worried. Once you and my younger self put your heads together, you'll be unstoppable. McFly? Biff? Kid! Grandpa? That's Mr. Tannen to you, Artie. What are you doing out here? Well, I was getting kind of hungry, so I figured I'd come down here for some free soup. Just thought I'd come down for some soup. Think, McFly! The DA's throwing Basically, around subpoenas like Babe Ruth. I don't think Ruth's a pitcher anymore. Shut it! If one of those subpoenas landed relatives. in the hands of my number cruncher, I'd be in a whole lot of trouble. I could even get sent up the river. You wouldn't want that, would you? Would you? Uh, no, of course not, kid. All right, that's better. What are you looking at, punk? Keep your eyes on the soup, kid. Well? Well, what? Well, what are you still doing here? Sorry, kid. I'll just run back to the safe house. You do that. And McFly? Yes? That hat's too flashy. You better let me hold on to it. Ah. Uh, now scram! Hey, that's, you got it, boss. Hat. And don't come out until I give you the all clear. I swear, if even one of you mooks could add two plus two without your fingers, I'd dump that wimp into the lake. Hey! Anyway, I'm off to make myself irresistible. Don't let anyone burn down the shop while I'm gone. Lazy hands make a man poor, but diligent hands bring wealth. Maybe that's my problem. Lazy hands. There you go. You're gonna see an old school phone, even older than Brown, the last one you saw. Uh, hi. Uh, do you know where I could find Emmett Brown? Young Master Brown is currently tending to his clerking duties at the courthouse. Who may I say is calling? The courthouse. Doc never told me he worked at the courthouse. How you doing, Einie? Don't touch those! These are very sensitive legal documents. Nobody is supposed to handle them but sworn officers of the court. Papa, I, I mean, Judge Brown says so. Judge <laughs> Brown? Ah, yeah, I always gotta check in with uh, Einstein. Nice to meet you. I'm Michael, uh, Corleone. Emmett Brown. But I am a law clerk, not a doctor. Now please get out of my way. I have important business to transact. Naturally, each two pay multiplied by the inversion of H has to come out less than expectation value of A, right? I don't know. Where am I? Listen, Emmett, you don't know me, but I'm your friend. I'm not big on friends. They get in the way of work. What's this important business you're up to? 
It's a legal matter, very complicated, very abstruse. I need to obtain five sets of initials on every copy of this writ of indemnification before Pop... I mean, before Judge Brown can even think of granting a waiver to the party in the first part. You have no idea what it's about, do you? That's how important it is. Listen. I understand you're working on a new invention in your lab. Invention? You must have me mixed up with somebody else. I'm in law. I have absolutely no interest in science. Or do we take H to stand for the Meridian line operator? Well, in that case... Come on, wait up a minute. You again? Can't you see I'm busy? See, I'm sort of in the science business myself. That's why I sought you out. Not that I care in the least, because science is the furthest thing from my own area of interest, which is law, but I don't believe you. It's true. I'm a scientist. So tell me something, Mr. Scientist, from your vast storehouse of scientific knowledge. Uh, the leg bone's connected to the thigh bone? Amazing. 1931, Doc. Okay, so you don't want your old man to know. That's fine. Listen, we all keep secrets. But I'm telling you, you can level with me about this science project of yours. I the... am not a scientist. Go ahead, ask me what E equals. What does E equal? I have absolutely no idea. See? I don't know where you got your information from about me, mister, but you're wrong, wrong, wrong! Equals mass times acceleration. That's Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Corleone. Come on, you could trust me, Doc. Uh, Emmett, it's your future I'm looking out for, in more ways than one. What are you talking about? I'm talking about you and science. Oh, that word again! If you insinuate I'm a scientist once more, I'll sue you for defamation of character! Uh. Oh, well, no, 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 Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Corleone! Uh, Emmett, uh, about Don't your- say it! I think I know what I need to do. A multiplied by the inverse of A. Mm, now, if H stands for one, the one dimensional harmonic constant later, then naturally H2 of A multiplied by the inversion of H has to come out less than fifty. Don't think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. I. Oh. <laughs> You'll see what I'm laughing at. Just the look that Doc gives me. So, Doc, does this ring a bell? Oh, think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the a multiplied by the inverse of A. Uh, Good grief! Is that me? 
I sound so... Young? I was going to say intense. I forgot how wound up I used to get. Yeah, but what are you muttering about? Oh, that's easy. It's Ivanov's conundrum. Just tell my younger self that H equals the Hamiltonian operator. Won't giving him the answer mess up the time stream? Only if it turns out that reality is actually nothing more than a holographic illusion created by the interplay of subatomic particles on a vast two-dimensional membrane. So... It'll be fine. I don't need to go in there anymore. Now a page down. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Corleone! Maybe H equals the Hamiltonian operator. What did you just say? I said maybe H equals the... Hamiltonian operator? Yeah! Great Scott! If H is the Hamiltonian, then H to the A multiplied by the inverse of H can only be the same as the expectation value for A! <laughs> That's it! That's the solution to Ivanov's conundrum, the problem I've been wrestling with in my head all week! I'm sure you would have figured it out by yourself in a day or two. The way you figured out how to build that rocket-powered drill. Where did you learn so much about... science? I'm from the planet Falcon. I'm from the future. I read a lot of Jules Verne. <laughs> I'm from the future. <laughs> These choices you're gonna see are pretty funny. Well, it's like this. If you know about my rocket power drill, then there can only be one explanation. <laughs> what? You're from the patent office! I confess I didn't quite know what to expect when I sent the paperwork, but I never expected this! Welcome! I'm at your service. What can I do for you? I need your rocket drill. I really need your rocket drill. I really, really Can need I see your rocket powered power drill? Of course, of course. Naturally, it's just a scale model, but it's nearly operational. I can show it to you, say, first thing in the morning. Nope. Nah, that's no good. I need to see a full size model. <gasps> that's fully operational. <gasps> Tonight. <gasps> Otherwise, we'll have to award the patent to a competing inventor, uh, Dr. McCoy. It can't be done! I mean, it might be possible to construct a full-size working model in that time frame, but I haven't got the main ingredient for the fuel. I'll get it for you. What is it? 190 proof grain alcohol. And you know how difficult it is to get a hold of alcohol these days. Especially now that someone's blown up the speakeasy. And besides, there's no way I can get off work until I've delivered the subpoena part of the investigation into the business affairs of Kid Tannen. Is it vitally important you see that rocket power drill today? Yes. Is it vitally important you deliver that subpoena today? Yes! Listen, I'll help you deliver it, and I'll see to what you get the alcohol you need. <laughs> It'll help you get that drill finished by tonight. Deal? Deal. Here's the subpoena. Arthur McFly? I've got a subpoena my grandpa. No! <gasps> it's Kid Tannen! Hey, I just saw him at the soup kitchen, yelling at Arthur McFly. I'm not surprised. Arthur does the books for his business. What kind of business? That's what the DA is trying to find out. Let's go talk to him. No! Why not? Kid Tannen can tell us where Arthur's hiding. Yeah, well, he can also have us fitted for a Chicago overcoat. You never know who can help you lay your hands on some bootleg. Maybe the most unlikely of people. Cry talk. Hey, uh, Miss Strickland. Oh, hello, Mr. Corleone. Try not to draw any undue attention my way. I'm on the trail of a hot new scoop, as we in the newspaper business say. What's the scoop? I've heard rumors that something shady is going on at the Sisters of Mercy soup kitchen. It's under new management, you know. And, oh, we mustn't jump to any conclusions. Not till the facts are in. 
I hope to heaven it is just a rumor. That soup kitchen is the front line in the good fight. If it goes bad, what will happen to the Stay Sober Society? Not to mention all the charitable institutions that depend on me for soup deliveries. Did you finish the story you interviewed me for? About Carl Sagan? Yes, but those pig-headed editors at the paper rejected it. They said my story was slanted, and that I was glorifying a suspected arsonist. As if their stories aren't always glorifying the criminal vermin that run this town. This whole thing makes me so mad I could spit! Though of course I never would. There's an ordinance against it, and it's so untidy. What's the Stay Sober Society? You haven't heard of the SSS? They do the most marvelous work, taking hopeless drunken bums and turning them into former hopeless drunken bums. I'm one of the founding members. And not to say that I was ever, well, you know. Anyway, we've always met in the cellar of the Sisters of Mercy soup kitchen, but for some reason the new managers don't want us down there, so we're stuck. We've got nowhere to meet. You make hot soup deliveries? It's one of my many small contributions to the good cause. Healthy bodies, healthy souls, or so one hopes. I pick up barrels of hot soup at the kitchen, and I deliver them hither and thither. Hill Valley Orphanage, the St. Francis Xavier Ranch for Unwanted Children, Foggy Mountain Home for the Incurably Insane, Shady Acres Rest Home. Oh, I can barely keep track of them all. It's a very big job. I know a place where the Stay Sober Society can meet. Oh? Where? The Brown Residence. You mean Judge Brown's place? Yeah, I happen to be good friends with his son Emmett, and he's told me the judge would love to lend his place out for, you know, good causes like yours. Really? Why, that's the most generous, public-spirited offer I've received in a month of Sundays. Please, tell your friend Emmett we accept. The meeting isn't due to start for a little while, so that'll give our people some time to set up. Hey, I can help you deliver soup. I don't need a lot of time to charities. Oh? Which ones? The, um, Mario Brothers. Ah, yes. The Italians do so many good works. If you'll just fix it so I can pick up the barrels of soup. Now hold your horses, let's not get over eager. I drive the soup cycle in this town, and I'm not about to turn it over to an upstart. But, if you're well-connected with the local charitable institutions... Yeah? You can let me know when they're running low on soup. As a matter of fact, I do know a local charity that's running low on soup. Oh? Who? The Stay Sober Society. The Stay Sober Society! Bless you for thinking of them. But that meeting isn't scheduled to start for a little while. And we wouldn't want them eating cold soup. I'm sorry about the way Einstein lit into you back there. I don't know what got into him. Well, I hope you've learned to keep him under control. Yeah, I found someone to keep him distracted. Very good! Now let's see if you know your multiplication tables. I got a book. Oh? Where? Alrighty. Now get the shipment ready. Ooh. Now take it to the suit. A cue ball. What? The truck just arrived with a fresh shipment of, uh, soup. Soup soup? Well, uh, we this is the regular soup, soup, and this is the special soup. Right. Special. Hey, what are you doing? I'm spicing up the soup. It's my secret recipe. Listen, this ain't the Savoy, and we ain't here to feed these bozos no fancy soup. The boss has got a business to rebuild, so knock off the goofing and mind your post. All right, all right, just try the soup. Well? Ah, 
I can see why you want to keep this a secret. We suspect that the soup barrels on the on the baker rack contains something stronger than soup. You can't get in the kitchen, but you can still cause objects in it to be moved. Have you tried the kitchen thing? The trick's gonna be I gotta get myself some quote unquote suit aka wine. Let's talk to the doc. Yeah. Huddle up, Emmett. Huddle? Just listen up for a second. Any ideas about how to get the hooch? Hooch? The alcohol, Emmett. Ah, one might come to the conclusion that the hooch is being hidden in some of those barrels. You're probably right, but which ones? Now, if I could get my hands on some of those barrels, I could weigh them and compare their specific gravity. Specific gravity? Come on, Emmett. Kids goons aren't going to let us do an experiment on their barrels. No, oh, I suppose you're right. We'll just have to ask the guy behind the counter. What? Ask him if any of his barrels are filled with illegal moonshine? Get real here. Well, I imagined a modicum of subtlety would be used. Subtlety. Right. We'll score that hooch somehow. I'll keep cogitating. There's no way I'm gonna keep that door open without some help. What are those tables for? We keep a few extra tables around for our end-of-the-month hobo soirees. Could you move them out of the way? Not a chance. I could throw out my back. What about those barrels? What about them? What kind of soup is that? It's not... Uh, uh, it's special mm. soup. What's special about it? It's, uh, it's made for grown-ups, kid. A soup for grown-ups? That's right, kid. Be nosy. See where it gets you. Hey, where do you think you're going? The kitchen? The kitchen's for management only, rummy. <laughs> Uh, excuse me. Yeah? Can I have a bowl of soup? We're a soup kitchen. What do you think? Uh, what kind of soup is this? It tastes like... Scrolle Ribolita? I was gonna say weak old cabbage. Everyone's a critic. Look... All I got to work with is this two-bit soup in a barrel and spice rack that hadn't been restocked since the Coolidge administration. What do you think I should do to perk this slop up? Let's see. Have you tried... Paprika? Paprika? Uh, I, I just think you could use a little uh, color. Color? Hmm. Okay. 
The kitchen's for management only, Rummy. Whoa! <clears throat> there we go, yes. And that gets it over there, and that takes the fear down there. Yeah, I know. It's like he scares me with the gun. Emmett. Yes? I think I out which... I can't, I think I out which barrels have the All right, I think I figured out which barrels have the hooch. Then what are you waiting for? He's not just gonna give me a barrel. Of course. Well, you seem to have a way with people, so I'll leave it up to you to trick that lummox into giving up his moonshine. Damn it, I can't get into the door over there. Those tables are jamming it shut. The door? So your plan is to just waltz in there and take a barrel of alcohol? Uh, no, of course not. That would be stupid, right? I'll say. Still, I'd like to get that door open. I can't do anything from out here. Well, that's a simple matter of physics. A lever, some sort of stop. Let me see what I can come up with. There's no way I'm going to keep that door open without some help. Okay, I've got some more ideas about your soup. Do tell. Let's see. Have you tried... Parsley? It might help to, uh, complement the mellow flavor of the cabbage. Complement the mellow... What are you talking about? Trust me. Hmm. You might be on to something, kid. Let me see what I got. Eureka! What did he do here? Emmett. Yes? Oh, that's interesting. Just a little mechanical ingenuity. In the end, the door is open. Yeah, so the dog good job. Out, or young dog. We'll score that hooch somehow. Now, I'll keep cogitating. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and... While oh, he's distracting. Ah, oh, he's not distracting anymore. Okay. Get distracted. And then the pipe. And then I still think the here. soup needs more flavor. Miss Strickland, come for some more soup? 
Come now, Mr. Donnelly. You know I wouldn't set one foot in this mockery of all that is good and decent if the poor of Hill Valley weren't so dependent on Mr. Tennant's overblown show of generosity. Was that a yes? Just give me the soup before I gag on the hypocrisy. I'll tell the boss right. you said hello. I'll just bet you will. And they picked up the barrel of hooch. Now all I have to do is to get it from her somehow. Won't be a problem. Hey, uh, Miss Strickland. Oh, hello, Mr. Corleone. I'm afraid I haven't much time. The meeting of the Stay Sober Society is due to begin very soon. You asked me to tell you if one of the local charities is running low on soup. Does somebody need a visit from my soup cycle? The Stay Sober Society. Stay sober That's sober. right. They'll soon be gathering at the Brown Estate, and we haven't provided refreshments. I can't get over the generosity of your friend Emmett, volunteering his father's house for our meeting. Huh? Uh, wait there! Michael! What in the name of Thomas Alva Edison do you think you're doing? Don't you get it? You need alcohol to run your drill, right? Those bootleggers at the soup kitchen won't let us get our hands on any of their hooch. But we can get Miss Strickland to pick it up for us and deliver it right to your door. No! Out of the question! Why? I can't just let strangers invade my parents' house! What do we know about these people? They're sober. They're sober. It says so right in the name. Well, okay, but... A pop needs his peace and quiet at the end of the day. This meeting is sure to be too noisy for him. They'll be quiet. You'll be quiet, right? Oh, yes! I play my tambourine very softly. You hear that? Yes, but... But what? But it's still impossible! But think of the Stay Sober Society. What'll happen to them? They can all fall off the wagon for all I care. But I promise Miss Strickland, it means so much to her. The answer is still no! Okay, forget the whole thing. We don't have to test your rocket power drill tonight. We don't? No. I'll take the train back to Washington and I'll tell the folks at the office to give the patent to Dr. McCoy. Wait! You will instruct the members of the society to wipe their feet before they come inside. Then you are, Emmett Brown. I thought as much. You have such a righteous face. Edna Strickland, I don't know how to thank you for your generosity. Oh, um, uh, pleased to meet you. The feeling is mutual. I've got a bad feeling about this. Uh, you worry too much, Emmett. Now all we gotta do is serve that subpoena, and we're off to build your rocket drill. And get my patent. Yeah, your, uh, patent. What the hell, Matches? You, you got Kiwi all over my socks! Sorry, boss. Get out of here! How about you? Huh? I'm sitting at a shoe shine booth. You walk up. Either you're here to shine my shoes, or you got a death wish. Which is it?
I'm looking for a guy named Arthur McFly. He's my, uh, sort of a relative. Well, he's my employee. And he's very busy today. Since you're Arthur's boss, you know where he is, right? He's at the, uh, office. Where's the office? I forget. So when do you think Arthur will be leaving the office? When I tell him he can leave the office. Hey, you missed a spot. Isn't that Arthur McFly's hat you're holding? It was McFly's hat. Now, it's my peanut bowl. <laughs> Can I have some peanuts? Why not? I'm a magnanimous kind of guy. Go ahead. Knock yourself out. Watch this. This is going to be pretty hilarious. Hey, kid! Yeah? What the hell is that? Hey! What'd you do? That hat, you lousy crook! Emmett! Emmett! Nobody makes a monkey out of Kid Tannen! Al, fix me up. Where do you learn how to move like that? Sandlot football. They used to call me the streak. Get out. Hey, honey, come here for a sec, boy. Hey, boy, can you find the guy who belongs to this hat? Where is he going? Only one way to find out. Deja vu. Yeah? Who is it? It's McFly! Shh, I know! Hey, Arthur. Can you come down a minute? Do I know you? <laughs> we are family. I've got some queries. We are the law. We represent the law. You don't want to go against the law, do you? No, but I don't want to go against Kid Tannen either. And he ordered me to stay put till he gives the word. Sorry. Some other time. Need any help? Um, never mind. Okay, so we gotta go back then. Go down. Like how Marty just used to 
crossbow like any normal This game is essentially about safety. Well, well, look who's back! They say rats always return to the scene of the sinking ship. Uh, get him, Matches! You son of a bitch! What do you think you're doing up there, you scrawny little runt? Get down here right now! Don't make me angry, Smucko! Get down here and face the music! Alright, so now I need to. I go on a solid. You can't get away that easy! Nobody puts one over on. Tannen and lives to tell about it. I don't You're think they're in a talkative twerp. mood right now. Gonna start composing your epitaph now, cause I'm gonna carve it into your face in bullets. Get down here. You're only making it worse for yourself. The longer you no stay way. up there, Worked the longer I'm to gonna it. take evacuating your guts. Eviscerating. That's what I said. So if you know what's good for you, oh, you'll Einstein. get the hell down from there. Einstein, there help! <laughs> Lay off! Get away get from me, you crazy get mutt! Go, go away, dog. We're busy here. Go on, scram! Hey, where'd he go? You let him get away, idiot! to deliver a lot of subpoenas? Father's always sending me out to do these dirty jobs. He wants to expose me to different kinds of people. All he's exposed me to is a lot of new curse words. If serving subpoenas is such dirty work, why don't you just say no? Look, what's the uh, worst thing that can happen to me on this I job? So you I can get, get shot. Arthur to come down. Yeah, well, believe me, that's nothing compared to what I'll get if I mouth off to my pop. We'll get that subpoena delivered, or my name isn't... Michael Corleone! Yeah. Hold on. Hey, how you doing, Einie? Einie? It's short for Einstein. Einstein, of course! Because he was a patent officer just like you! Now. What do you think you're doing up 
there, you scrawny little runt. Get down here right now! It's Kid! Right away, boss! Ah, uh, where's Kid? I don't want to record them right now. I don't want to record them right now. Oh yes, we need to prevent the ASAP now. Arthur McFly? Yeah? Got something for you. Thanks! A subpoena?! Ordering you to appear in court and provide evidence in the investigation into- Kid Tannen?! Take it back! You can't get rid of it, Mr. McFly. Once you've been served, it's your duty to report to the court at the earliest possible time. Failure to do so could lead to a warrant for your arrest. Arrest? But Kid will kill me. Stupid, stupid Artie. Holy cats, what am I gonna do? I suggest you avail yourself to the protection of the court. Oh gosh, oh gosh. Well, we've served the subpoena and gotten a barrel of booze delivered to your house. Looks like we're off to your lab to build your rocket drill. Ah, uh, you do have a lab, right? What kind of future patent holder would I be without a lab? Come on! Doc! I'm off to get the rocket drill. Good! <gasps> Come on, let's go! Time waits for no man! Are you sure this is gonna work, Emmett? Don't let the ramshackle nature of my laboratory fool you. If all goes according to plan, we'll soon be in possession of the most powerful rocket fuel known to man! That's great! Uh, how? Well, it's very simple. This crankshaft induces a powerful direct current into the electrolysis chamber, producing hydrogen which must be periodically released into the primary distillation barrel! <laughs> While tending to the hydrogen, we'll also need to regularly sprinkle these shredded protein flakes into this aquarium of tuber bacteria to generate the necessary nitrogen to catalyze the reaction! Cool. Oh, hot! Extremely hot! The temperature of the reaction must be kept at a steady temperature of 623 degrees Kelvin by carefully pumping these bellows! Any questions? Uh... Emmett? Why is there a brace of drunkards gathering on our lawn? Sweet fancy Moses, it's my father! So? So, he doesn't know I'm engaging in acts of scientific exploration in here. He thinks this is where I go to pour through my law books. Oh. You tend to the reaction, I'll try to get rid of him! Tend to the... what? Can't we just start over after he's gone? It's too late! The reaction's already started! Don't worry, I'll try to help you out where I can. But... Emmett! Uh, coming, father! Father! Don't you father me, child! I have no idea what kind of pressure I'm under! Know who invented fire pop? I don't know either, but you can be damn sure it wasn't a lawyer! Pressuring me to be something I'm not. Listen to the words I'm emphasizing. Don't you turn your back on me! Can't you see this is eating me up inside? You don't know what called. 
Why won't you release me from your unattainable expectations? This isn't food for thought, Pop. It's gruel. Excellent. Now twists the valve there. Great. We're about a quarter of the way home. Damn it! Get back here! Oops. Oh, well, maybe your burning passion, Father, but it is not mine. Someday you will have children, and you will not know what I want. I don't know what's eating you, Father, but I wish it would go on a diet. I'm not just another one of your staffers who spins around you like a top. <laughs> you are going to find out. I don't get to control my life just because you fed and clothed me for 17 years. Don't you have a release valve on your mouth somewhere? Ah, uh, halfway there. Damn it! Keep up the good work. Can I honor your wishes? You treat me like common bacteria! Your ancestors are spinning in their graves right now. I'm not being such a crank! What do you call a room full of lawyers trapped in a burning building? A good start! Why don't you go feed the ducks, father? Your mother and I are shocked at your behavior, young man. Pressuring me to be something I'm not. I'm trying to spin this argument around to my failings. Is it my fault if I don't get a spark out of laws and statutes? Some bronze have been officers of the court since God's heavenly spark first gave rise to men. What did you do? Emmett, who are you talking to in there? No one, Father! There is a flame inside me that cannot be quelled by your legalistic gobbledygook, Father! You really want to vent our dirty laundry in public like this? What are they feeding you in that school of yours? You look like a skeleton! Just pay attention to what I say. Damn it! I'm not true with you yet! I... Oops. This may come as a shock to you, Pop, but not everyone wants to be a lawyer. You can't call a room full of lawyers trapped in a burning building. A good start! Burn your bridges so cavalierly, my son. One great thing ever generated by a lawyer. Lawyers are nothing but a bunch of hot air. There, I said it. You keep bellowing like that. I strongly object to the current of this conversation, Father. What will it take to light a fire under your unappreciative mind corpus? Why must you always scatter a condescension my way? Father, why don't you ever listen to me? Almost there. Emmett! Uh, coming, Father! How many times do I have to prove myself to you before... Ah, Jesus, you did this again. ...before I can shake your overbearing criticisms. I have no idea what kind of pressure I'm under. This isn't food for thought, Pop. It's gruel. Won't you release me from your unattainable expectations? I do Should I honor your wishes? You treat me like common bacteria. The hotter you get, the more I know I'm right. Do I get a turn to talk, or is this going to be another monologue? 
employers are nothing but overblown bags of gas. There is a flame inside me that... I thought you were a scientist! Emmett! If it weren't for scientists, men like you would still be divining the future with sheep's bladders and goat gizzards. Why are you always bellowing at me? What use is a mic? Don't touch anything until I tell you to. Damn it! Oh, maybe your burning passion, Father, but it is not mine. I don't know what's eating you, Father, but I wish it would go on a diet. Try Galileo's rotations. Do you ever listen to yourself? Can't you see this is eating me up inside? You have a release valve on your mouth somewhere. I you don't get to control my life just because you fed and clothed me for 17 years. I have no idea what kind of pressure I'm under. If you don't like my performance at the courthouse, then fire me. Why don't you go feed the ducks, father? Don't you have a release valve on your mouth somewhere? I should just get struck by lightning. Would that make you happy? Uh, I'm afraid we'll have to take this up later, Pop. My soup's about to boil over. What? This isn't over, young man. Whew. I had to be clicker on the last round. Are you okay? You and your dad sounded... It was an argument we should have had a long time ago. We... Oh! oh. What? Eureka! Now all we gotta do is fuel up the old rocket power drill and you and, and I can- I can take it and go. But don't you want to test it first? No time. The, uh, the, the last train for DC leaves in just a few minutes. All right. You've got to get this baby to the U.S. Patent Office. Uh, exactly. So tell me, Michael, when can I expect to hear back from the Patent Office? Oh, in about, I'd say... I, I can't. Huh? Emmett, I I'm not from the patent office. I don't understand. I, I, I lied to you, but I, I didn't want to. It was just, it was the only way I can get you to trust me. See, there's somebody who's in big trouble. Uh, someone very important to me, to, to both of us. I, I can't tell you who, but... I need to save him, tonight, and, and I need your invention to do it. I'll get it back to you, I, I promise. And, Emmett... You're gonna be a great inventor. Wait! Keep the throttle at about eight. So basically I'm taking the drill and Emmett is okay with it. Okay, Doc, I got the drill. Now let's get you out of here. Come on, start! Mr. Corleone! You're too late! Too late? The doc's not supposed to be... Doc! They're moving him to another facility for safekeeping! Oh! I better go get a quote from the police chief!
paddy wagon intercepted, suspect slain, and they're still after him. But how am I going to rescue him now? Hmm. At least the rocket part came out of this one piece. Coming, Doc. Basically, I'm on a rocket powered bike chasing down a police car. Danger, Doc. I've got to get you out of here. What's that? I said you're still in danger. Never mind. Never mind. Get me out of here, and we'll talk later. What's he doing here? Keys. The window shut tight. Better keep an eye on this. It's really my only way of keeping track of Doc's fate. I better keep an eye on this. It's really my only way of keeping track of Doc's fate. I better keep an eye on this. It's really my only way of keeping track of Doc's fate. I better keep an eye on this. It's really my only way of keeping track of Doc's fate.
keys are on the dashboard, but I can't reach them. You need a protraction appurtenance. What? A reach extender. Kid Tannen's driving the truck. Kid Tannen? That explains a lot. Don't worry, Doc. I'll get you out. Be careful, buddy. I'll I be back. It. I'll thing. wait right here. So grab the antenna. And I'm gonna make my way back to the other side now. I think I need to use that antenna. <laughs> the damn tire's in my way. Maybe let me let me go talk to the dog. Okay, so I got that. To get rid of an inconvenient spare tire. An iron uh, tire. Oh, a tire iron, of course. anymore. There you go. Hell out of here, right? At least you at least you know how uh I'll just keep the key. Don't worry, Doc. Yeah, I'll be back! I know what to do. So I gotta go. Let's get the uh, I think I need to talk to the box. Nah. Can't break the lock. I can't break the lock! There's a key! But it's probably a fuck! I need a distraction. There we go. Leave it to me! Hey! Hey, driver! There we go. You're driving too fast! Watch how you take those curves! What are you trying to do? Kill me? Not I object to your tone of voice! And I find this seat distinctly uncomfortable! Do you have a pillow I can sit on? Hey! I'm talking to you, driver! Don't ignore me! You! Ah! <laughs> ah! Thanks, Doc. I guess that's why they call you the streak. How did you know that? I had my sources. Thing. He bled, Sagan! I already know what to throw at him. Throw that hug. Ow! Son of a bitch! Oh! 
it's a lot easier. This is a rescue! Uh, that's the idea! Doc! Fuck! Hit the throttle! Doc! The throttle! Boy! Oh! sorts of bizarre repercussions my younger self's invention of a flying bicycle will have on the timeline. Did you know that would happen? I had a suspicion. I never could keep those rockets from exploding. So, what do we do now? Now we get back to 1986 before our interactions with the past inevitably cascade into a calamitous future. Where'd you leave Einstein? Uh, Doc? He's not in the pound, is he? No, but I think you've got bigger problems right now. Great Scott! Careful not to run into ourselves. Hey, fellas. All right, McFly. Let's go see the boss. History says Tanner will be arrested by a rookie cop by the name of Danny Parker. I fear that nothing will save Hill Valley from descending into the fires of so chaos and corruption. Episode. Nothing yeah. is over until Kid Tannen says games. it's over. So we just we just got done with episode one. So there's four more to go, but this can be spread out over time. Well, they're gonna go. They're 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 gonna go back. But what what's happening is that in the next episode they have to go rescue uh, Arthur McFly because. If, if he gets hurt or beat up or, or killed, then that pretty much wipes out the McFly family. So some something happened while McFly was testifying where he, where he got kidnapped and beat up. So that's on the next episode. So now I'm just curious if it's just going to go straight into it or just choose the... Okay, so... I think it'll allow me to choose the episode if I wanted to continue. So pretty much, I just completed It's About Time. So there's one, two, three, there's four more to go. Now I can save the, I can save the, the next one for tomorrow. I think... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end the stream.